beautiful mug. Yeah, I think that's just a little better than me staring up at the top of the <laughs> screen. Because I have it hanging over the screen and it's dead now, so I got it hanging out of a beer glass right now. Honestly, that works. <laughs> hey, if it's stupid and it works, it ain't stupid. So, plus, <laughs> my kid's got a freaking... Then, ooh. <laughs> Do you freeze or I freeze? One of the two. No, you're yeah. good. I, the evil side of me is maybe I should stay not moving to mess with him. <laughs> I do that occasionally with the wife. I'll just be like, he froze. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> so I got my, got my ceiling fan. I'll look at the screen. I'm like, is there anything moving that shouldn't be moving? <laughs> oh yeah. How you doing, Mike? <laughs> oh, I'm fucking tired. It's I'm tired. <laughs> oh, it is. It really is. It's in my head against the wall. I've got a student teacher. I've got a mentee. So I've got two leadership. Then I'm, department head this year it's just seems like there's always something why is it that towards the end of february into the spring is when it gets i've noticed that's where things go but bonkers for teachers in general granted we deal with little things across the year but that end of winter beginning of spring is just out of control and then spring is just I can't speak for you, but for me, spring is when things get out of control, and I'm just like, what is happening? Things are on fire. What, where? How did we get here? I know for part for me on that side, for from now into spring break, the kids didn't want, they get that whole mindset where they don't want to come back. And so you get them settled, you try to get them settled in, but right now they're thinking about spring break, they're thinking about everything other than have to sit through this class, because forgot their why. After I remind them all the time, I'm like, what's your end state? What do you want out of this engagement here? Graduate. Okay, so what do you need to do? You need to do the course. To do the course, you need to do the work. So I try to keep them motivated, but they're, they just don't have that mindset. Especially here, because we've had COVID and then we had Hurricane Michael. So these kids are just, they were raised on the concept of grace and compassion. I really don't have to do any work. I'm just going to squeak by. There is no standard because if you get any parent to bitch loud enough, it happens. Exactly. You shake your head because you know exactly what it is. What do they do? They turn around, the parent bitches enough, and the school caves. What can you do to get this kid to pass? How about we hold him to standard? You know? Hey, do your work on time. Do the work. Instead of making caveats, unless the child has a legitimate Learning disability. I don't care that you're AD. I can give you extended time, and you've had extended time. The fact is you're not doing the work. And so we need to hold these kids to standard. This is what it is. This is what you need to do. Quit making caveats for them and making, let's, if you can at least just do half the work. If you can do half the work, it'll be okay. No. Do the whole dang work. Unless you've got a learning disability. Why are we treating everybody as, I don't know, it's, we just keep making changes and it burns the teachers out. The kids get nothing, no benefit from it because they don't have any perseverance. Resiliency is shot because they've never learned to develop it. Then, of course, when they get outside of those four walls of academia and into the real world and they're like, I have extended time. For what? Get to work. Yeah, it's been a... That's been my battle this year, specifically with my sixth grade class, is they have yet to develop resiliency, which I, on one hand, I'm just like, OK, y'all are in sixth grade, so we're still going to build that up for the rest of middle school. But then on the other hand, I'm just like, you have re outside of academia, too, you have no resiliency for anything <laughs> like and <laughs> I'm mad that Brett is not here because he can back me up. But. I'm sure that the high school teachers get students who ask like the more obvious questions, but with the middle school students, they question, they have questions about everything that they have to do. Am I doing this right? What are the directions? I was just like, ladies and gentlemen, you were given eyes for a reason. Use them. The directions are on the paper. I have modeled what we are doing and don't, this is how bad it has gotten, Mike. So with my sixth graders, I grabbed popsicle sticks and I drew question marks on them. And every class period, they get this popsicle stick. So I explained to them, 
You get one question and one question only. Once you ask your question, regardless of what it is, whether it's related to the content, whether it is what we are doing, any question you ask me, you get that one question. I take your popsicle stick. You're not allowed to ask me any more questions in the period. I was like, use your resources, use your notes, because I'm not having 50 million questions in the span of five minutes. Uh Uh-uh. And that's so that people are like, oh my God, that's so mean as a teacher. You're like, no, you don't realize that they will ask the questions. We want them to struggle a little bit. We want them to research. But we get to, I get kids all the time, what, where is this in the textbook? And I look down and it's a freaking bolded word. But it's not the definition. So it doesn't say word, com, you know, colon, freaking boom, here's the definition of it. They have to read and interpret it and infer information. They don't want to do that. They, what do I write? What do I write? Like, it's an, I, give me the answer. I don't want to have to struggle at all. And I know you probably get it just like the, an, the answer that they're looking for is either on the board, on their paper, on lot, somewhere that they have immediate access to, but they do not want to. Give it to me. I don't want to have to work for it. I faced it with my own kid today. Actually, it was yesterday. He was trying to design something. He was trying to make a piece for a costume thing for him and his buddies to play. And so how do I do this? I said, you need to design it out. I can't. Okay, we're going to work on the can't yet thing. But it was like, all right, so what are you trying to do? I want this. Okay, how does this work? I'm trying to get him to work through it, and he was just shutting down. He's like, no, I can't. I said, dude, you got to use that gray matter, man. To struggle a little bit. I can't. I can't because they eventually somebody has in their life has given them answer because it's we don't want the kids to struggle at all. We want it, we need them to let them struggle. We need them to let them fail. It's yeah, I'm just like and I've shared this with all of y'all in our group messages, but like at the beginning of the year for me with these with these kids, I'm just like because they have no resiliency, they made me question. I was like, holy crap, am I not explaining things well enough? Am I not doing this right? And then upon further reflection and conversations with you three, I was like, no, I have broken it down to as basic as I could possibly can. I don't know how much more I'm, I can't spoon feed it to them. I can't. Listen, when it comes to some of the content, so when it comes to sixth grade mathematics, of course, it's going to be challenging because a lot of this is a new because now we're getting into the introduction of the concepts in middle school for math. But I have broken it down simple. At least I think I have. I don't know how much more simple I can make it for them. And of all three of my middle school classes that I teach, sixth grade has been my I love them to death, but they've been my proverbial headaches because a pull and double duty of not only teaching them the content, but I have to keep them and try to get them to understand why organization is important. Listen, s- sixth grade is a messy bunch. They just throw everything in their backpack. And I'm just like, you guys, there's a folder there for a reason. Don't crumple your paper. It's just by sixth grade, they should have gotten that stuff figured out. <laughs> really? Yeah, I've got sophomores and juniors that I'm like, do you want a folder? Because we always have extra school supplies. And I'm like, I've got folders. Again, they don't bring them. I've got more papers that are probably left on my tables every day. And it just gets increasing more and more every time because I don't care. I remember we got something, it went into our binder. It went into our folder. And this was when I went through middle school in the 90s. No, early 90s. Yeah, I graduated in 97. It was still back then. We had, we kept the stuff. But they have immediate access. They don't want to look for it. I have, I even took, so I don't know if anybody else uses, we have Canvas as the program to, uh, to, for digital classrooms. I have a heading. In each one of my modules, information, textbook, study guide, assignments, and tests. Then even one that says extra, so there's all the other stuff that I don't want to issue, but it's there. I throw all of that in there, and I have it organized under these text headers. I can't find the textbook online. By the way, we are starting our 12th organizing principle. 
12 units in, and the textbook has not changed locations. It's the only one that says chapter blah, chapter 15, da, 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 whatever it is. I can't find it. Did you look for it? Yes. I'm like, okay, let's go see. Show me where you're looking in modules. I'm like, no, you're not. I swear I wasn't there before. Yeah. So then that begs the question, like, where does that responsibility lie? Do we put it on them? Do we put it on parents? Do Because I'm no, trying to figure. Yeah. It's I'm on just us. Like That's where it gets put on. Where it needs to be is with the student themselves, especially as they're getting older. Now, I had a parent that says, look, you will sign off that my child, this is what the parent legitly requested, that their kid brings me a planner, puts the assignments in there, and signs it, and then I sign it off that they have the correct information in their planner. And then when they turn it in, I sign it off that they've turned it in. This individual is seven, 16 or 17 years old. I... Exactly. I can't. It's ridiculous that the parents like, oh, uh, what can we do? I had a conference with another parent. The kid won't show up to class. When I say he won't show up, since the beginning of the year back in August, has probably shown up ten times to my class. Total. Total. And the parents are asking, what can we? What can they do? Like, we're, they're asking us help parent this child. I have a hundred and forty-seven six other students assigned to me. I can't do the parent thing to your kid, 146 others, and my own. All right? What do we do? What do we do? I mean, what do we do? Figure that shit out, man. We're here to help you with whatever you decide to do, but come on. This is what teachers are... It's this, among other things, that just burning out teachers... Left and right, because it's continuing. Where is the one source of thing that will not quit? That's the teacher until they quit. So, for me, because we're getting, at the time of this recording, we're getting ready to end the trimester this upcoming week at school. And I'm going to share two stories, because this is, I'm just, I'm annoyed with everything. Again, this is nothing new in my six years of being a teacher, but I still have the right to get annoyed. So this one annoyed me, but not to the extent of the second one. So this first one, I have a parent message, email me asking me, is there anything to raise my child's grade in your class? And so I'm like, hmm, OK, let me take a look and see what I can do. And then I look and I see why they're not doing so well. And then I was that was the point where I sent the screenshot of the email. I was just like. Dear parent, the reason your child is failing is for two reasons. Number one, their test scores aren't great, but that's something that can be improved on with better study habits and things like that. And I explained to them because I don't agree with the way that assessments are graded because they count for 40 percent of the overall grade in the class. And I don't think that's cool. I don't like that. To me, that's too much. I think it should go 30 for assessments, 30 for projects, 20 for homework, 20 for classwork, because it's currently broken down as 40 for assessments, 30 for projects. And I think like homework is 10 percent and classwork makes up the missing percent. I was like, that's boggles my mind. It is what it is. I'm going to twist your nugget real quick. We do a 95 five split. Damn. You wonder why the kids don't do formative work for us. Clutching my proverbial pearls. Holy shit, Mike. What, how, wait, okay. Yeah, we'll come back. Like we'll, now, is that just a thing? Is that a state thing? Like, I need explanations here. That is a district mandated against for all of the school district guidelines for the grading is a 95-5 split. What the actual fuck, dude? <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's one of the reasons why I'm trying to look into the guidelines to see how, if I can get it to where you have to do all the formative work to get access to the summative. Oh, because I can't get, I've got kids that have not turned in a single assignment, but they'll come up, what can I do to bring up my test? Flipping work. Look at this. It's literally, I can, sh grades, it's like, or sorry, missing. I, you can't put zeros in. It's not zero, it's missing. All of them show missing. And the tests are low, and I'm like, right there. But I, 
This is so hard. There's so much work. I'm like, no, it's not. I don't assign homework. I said, if you don't get it, if we don't get to it in class, then it might be homework. But most of the time, we'll cover it the next day. I said, you guys need to do this stuff. But because there is, there, they have no weight to it. One of the first questions I get asked anytime, is this formative? Is it treat everything as summative until I uh, tell you otherwise? Doesn't get them to do it. But they won't do the formative work get them ready for the summit of work because god forbid they ha they get held to it me that's why i'm seriously looking at it if you want to get so far behind by not showing up to the class that's on you but all of this stuff is online all of this so if you're not there you can still do it right but i might have three or four assignments per op depending on the size of them they won't do anything. They wonder why they're getting 30s or 40s on the test. I'm like, because you're not doing what I want you to do. If you sit there and just listen to me talk, you're going to catch a small percentage of it. It needs to be reinforced. But until we can get them to do the work. But they're like, oh, is it, can you just accept an alternate assignment? That face was so beautiful because that's my exact reaction too. I'm like, it's 100% aggro. But you just, the minute, oh, is there something else I could do? No, do the fucking work, lack of a better term. My favorite question is what, are you going to give extra credit? I'm like, no, I shouldn't give you extra credit because you couldn't do, what makes you think that I'm going to give you extra credit if you have yet to show me that you can do the actual work when I ask of it? I'm, I was like, the only way I would give extra credit is to a student who is like on the teetering line, but has shown me that they are giving it the best that they can. And they have showed me that maybe they have some missing assignments, but if they are consistently giving it their best effort, then I'm like, sure, why not? I'm not just going to give out extra credit just because you're about to get your Xbox and your PlayStation, your phone taken mm. away. I was like, that was your responsibility to begin with. <laughs> That ain't mine. I'll have kids that'll say, oh, I've got a 79. Can I get one point for an 80? You know what? I said, let me take a look. I'll look up their their stuff. If you've got the majority of your work turned in, and I'll look at it and say, you know what? I can fudge a point. You know, I can help you. I can help you out here maybe a little bit. You've shown me, hey, you know, answer this question for me. Let me give you a little something there. But when I look, and oh, I've got a 69. Can I get a 70? I'll look, and it, there, it's just blank, missing everything. I said, no, you won't do your basic assignment. You're going to ask a favor for me? I don't think so, Sparky. Not going to happen. It baffles my mind in that kind of... And that was... I'm, yeah. I'm the asshole, but I'm the asshole for doing it. <laughs> Forget these kids, man. But yeah, I explained to the parent, I was just like, test scores I can't do anything about, but the other thing that's hurting their grade is because they don't turn in their work. And I'm just like, there's nothing I can do about it. And on top of that, this, I also had to explain to the parent, I was just like, your student has no excuse because they barely miss a day of school. So they don't get that extension as if somebody was about to, the extension if somebody was going to, if they were absent and whatnot, which we'll get into in a little bit, because I make my absent policy like if you miss it should be really easy and then it boggles my mind when students who are absent i give them the we'll get into that but that email annoyed me i was like no i was like am i the asshole for trying to keep these middle schoolers accountable for their success and i'm like i thought about it, i was like you know what no i am not the asshole in this situation my job as a teacher is to teach and to hold the students to their academic success. Success is their effort. I'm not, I try to make my class as easy as possible in the sense where it's manageable. I'm not giving you multiple assignments to do in a day. I'm just asking the bare minimum that you show up, that you at least engage when we're doing notes, and that you give me your best effort. But, and this is true across the board. I've had multiple conversations with individual students and whole entire classes explaining to them, you guys put so much effort in trying to outsmart the system and to try to find ways to circumvent what you're supposed to do, that if you put that same energy and just doing the bare minimum that I'm asking you, you will find that your grade will not be hurting as much. Just the minimum. And that's the thing is, 
it's not asking for collegiate style papers that you're just trying to to but you just burn them out academically. This isn't AP. This isn't dual enrollment. These aren't advanced play, tag classes or anything. They're asking, here, I gave you, we did the classwork, the classwork, the lecture, if you will. Here's a simple one-page worksheet that reiterates what we just talked about. On the back side is a couple questions, help you make sure you understand what we're talking about. It kind of reinforces lecture. That's all I'm asking you for to do. Uh, there's a crossword on here. Do we have to do that? Literally, they will whine about a word find, a crossword puzzle. I'm like, it's a fill in the blank question. Blank Lenin was in charge of the Soviet Union. What is his first name? Can't find it in the text. I can't find the answer. It's not in the notes. So look on the front page. What does it say? Boom. Oh, that Lenin. Oh. See, this is why I wish we all lived closer, because then we can just get together in person and just... <laughs> it's the apathy. That's what I think that's what's killing is the apathy of them in regards to this. That is what kills the. That's what's killing teachers, let alone the ones that are coming in with the attitude that are complete, utter disrespectful. I, I was out the other day for my son's field trip, and my student teacher was in there with a substitute, and <laughs> he was trying to reinforce this one student. Hey, come on, man, let's get back on task. You gotta get some work done. You gotta. It's actually sorry. Take that back. It was the day of the test. It was like, all right, dude, you gotta go take this test. Dude, you at least have to go get a Chromebook, man. You gotta go get a Chromebook. Student turned around and was like, man, y'all got me fucked up. Because God forbid they try to reinforce. Hey, dude, just go get a Chromebook. Just turn it on. Try. Do something. No, oh, they want to be a freaking carrot. Sitting in that seat going, oh, sorry, staring at their phones. I'm just like, yeah. I, the apathy is getting ridiculous. And... It's not just even the students, it's the parents, which brings me to the second email I got a couple weeks ago that really made me mad. So at my school, we have a resource specialist that has at our school. We there are per periods each week where because I have sixth grade, I have them for study hall and enrichment period where we reinforce concepts. And so we have a resource specialist that does pull out with the kids. So, you know, during the time I have them for study hall and enrichment. They pull them out like kids with the IEPs and the 504s and all that for the additional support. And so the resource specialist emails me one day and just be like, hey, I received this email from a parent about why the student has not such a good grade in your math class. And so. Now, you would think if this was the first time this happened, I was like, OK, that's weird. Well, let me talk to the parent. This was the second time this happened. The first time something similar happened, but they emailed my principal and then my principal sent an email be like, hey, this and this was and the, my principal sent this email to all the middle school teachers be like, hey, I just got word this email from this parent kid and my principals. I'm pretty sure you guys are on top of it, but. Just so we have paper documentation, respond back to this on what you're doing and give it an explanation. Like my principal trusts us 100 percent, but wants to cover bases so parents don't have any leeway of making excuses or whatever. Oh, yeah. So I was annoyed when that happened. And fast forward to the resource specialist saying to me a similar email. I was pissed. I'm like, this is the second time that the same parent has asked everybody else but me about why their child is not doing good. And that really <laughs> pissed me off. And I just sat there. I was like, okay, how badly do I want to keep this job right now? <laughs> yes. I was like, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to, I really want to keep this job. So I'm going to be polite and I'm going to be cordial. But as I'm writing this email, I, in the most academically way possible, basically said that this is some bullshit. All the stuff is online. If you actually took the time to look at this, 
and check at home what your child is doing and what's supposed to be done, then we they wouldn't be doing so poorly in my class. I was yeah, and then they had the audacity that it took days to finally for them to get back to me. And they're just like, oh, my gosh, we had a long conversation with our student. We talked about that they need to do better and that they're going to put their best foot forward. And like, and I just sat here reading this email and I'm just like, no, they're not. I was like, I don't know what goes on at home. And frankly, I really don't care. I was just like the fact that the matter is you just showed me the type of person you are because you're not going to come to me, but you're going to go to everybody else. I don't. That part baffled my mind. I was like, I'm the math teacher. So you would think common sense would dictate that if there was a question about a student's grade in the math course, you would go to the math teacher. But no, you go to my boss and you go to the resource specialist. I swear, because if they don't get the answer they want from the teacher or like I had, no, I, I, I sent it to the group chat for us, the parent that uh, I had the brain fart. Oh, that they turned around and said, oh, it's not because they said they turned it in. Look at your kid's assignments. Is it the one thing that he didn't turn in that's missing? Or is it everything that is missing? And all of a sudden, this one thing didn't get graded? Yeah, no. Kid throws, throws the teacher under the bus. The parents contact, if at all, the parent the first time. But if they don't get the answer they want, then they run up through the admin chain. You know how many emails that I see that initiate with how they get a hold of the principal's email, and he's the first line they reach, and so he's, oh, I need to inquire about this. And most likely, I've got a great principal, I really do. My admin staff is amazing. But he'll send it down to the AP, who sends it down to the AA, who sends it down to me. It's just a general inquiry, but it's like... But now all these lines are in there when it could have been a simple, Hey, Mr. Ward, can this, can my little Johnny turn this assignment in late? No problem. Or, no, I've given plenty of warnings. This is from the first quarter of the year. I'm not accepting this work anymore. And the parent goes, hey, little Johnny, guess what? Your teacher says uh, no, so you have to eat that grade. They know if they complain loud enough that they're going to get it right. And then they throw out those threats. I'll call the media. I'll call the district. You want their number? Go ahead. What I'm doing is in right in line with my syllabus. Have a nice day. And Hi, it, oh, yeah. I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> nah, like, I'm. it's just a whole mixture. Like, I have, in my six years of teaching, I have yet to, of the triangle between admin, students, and parents, I have yet to encounter an issue on the admin part of the triangle of the trifecta because I've been blessed enough to have great administrators and principals that have our backs, which is much appreciative because the horror stories I hear, I'm just like, it's not fun. Students is going to be a thing and that's nothing new and that's not where my issue comes from. Most of it comes from parents and I'm just like, Y'all have been ghosting me all year, but now you're emailing me about your child's grade. I'm like, where was this concern? I was like, maybe I was at first. I thought maybe I should be like getting in contact with them more if they're not doing so good. And I'm like, no way. Hold up. My principal sat down with every single parent and went over how to access the parent portal for them to check grades. And so I'm just like, my principal took time out of their schedule to sit down with all the parents to figure out how to do the parent portal to check grades. The students know how to check the grades. So therefore, no, I'm like, you have the ability. Everyone has a, some sort of device, whether it's a computer, a phone, a like Chrome, a laptop, an iPad, whatever. So back Take in the day, pre cell phone, smartphone, digital device connected 24 seven. Teachers needed to be reaching out more. When you used to get the only progress report, unless you reached out, was your progress report mid-quarter or whatever that they would send out. And you got your report card. So that was the, the only times that you ever really were forced to. If little Johnny or Susie were have, was having a problem, yeah, the teacher should be reaching out 
back in that day. But the day of the digital, we have dead ass access. I and mean, when I say dead ass, no freaking problem with it. Started the at most 24 hours off of a live update. And updates every night at 10 o'clock. Right, that's how I have it set up. Thanks me a lot of emails, I promised you, if you set it up that at that hour. They can get almost real-time access to their kid's grade. How is my kid doing right at this immediate second? So at most, you're a day or two off. There is no reason for the teacher to be sending DNF reports that a parent should be engaged. I check my kid's grades Every couple of weeks, I don't have a problem. I said, I don't have a problem, kid, but it's not like he's the problem. I don't have a problem. I don't have a kid who's got a problem with his grades or his academics. So if he, I did, I would be checking them daily, if not weekly, and just getting minor updates. If you're all of a sudden concerned, don't be shocked if you care only once a year or once a quarter that your kid cares once a quarter. <laughs> It's <laughs> that sigh. That's just perfect, Mike. It, it, it really is, is because it's. I think this is a shared. How to put it? It's a shared struggle, a, f a shared frustration that is across the board for all teachers. It's not just this onesies or twos. Hey, I've got this problem. Oh, really? What's your one problem? No. This is something that we all are coming across from, and this is. I think we need parental support, and I'm not talking about. Join in the Teacher Appreciation Week fundraising committee or being a band booster. You need to be actively engaged in the day-to-day -day operations of your child's schoolwork. Not involved in the school, but involved in the schoolwork. Hey, do you have any homework tonight? No. This is the third night in the row you don't have any homework, and I know your teachers usually give you homework. I understand that there's some teachers that don't do homework, but you're going to tell me all your work's up to date? You know what? Thank you for telling me. Go double check. Why are you missing assignments? Oh, that. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, my ass, you forgot about it. Be engaged with them. Again, that's us parenting again. And I'm just like... <laughs> What sucks about this whole situation, too, for myself, because you you I think you know me pretty well at this point. I have a very I have a very healthy sense of optimism and I try to stay positive when it comes to most situations. I have my ups and downs and my struggles. But for the most part, I try to see I try to see the brighter side of things. But this whole thing with parents has just it's the one aspect of my profession that has just created a sense of apathy and i'm just like they have not shown that they care so therefore why should i care when it comes to communicating with them if i beginning of the year no responses i was like okay you know what maybe they're busy yada but like i'm like we're halfway through the year i'm just like you know what i'm not going to burn myself out i'm not going to bend over backwards here and here's the thing. There are only there's only one exception that I have, and there's only two students that fall into the category. But even then, those parents have shown me that they care. And that comes with my students who have parents who English is not their first language. They aren't they weren't born here, but they were naturalized here. So they're legal citizens. They were born and raised in Mexico and moved over. There's only two students out of all my classes that fit in that category, but those parents, even with the limited resources, they have done everything they possibly can to make sure that their students are in line. Their work is not necessarily the best, but the fact is that they're giving it their all and the par I have their parents' support. And I'm like, if those parents can do it, I just want to tell all my other parents, I was like, those that have the resources, those that have all this stuff, I was like, if those two parents can do it and they are working with little to nothing, there is no excuse for the rest of you to get on board with this here. I'm like, what is the problem? I understand that you get a seven to eight hour babysitter Monday through Friday half the time. I understand that. But at the same time, 
I'm trying to prepare your students for high school. I'm trying to prepare them for the real world. I'm trying to prepare them to be decent human beings. But I can't be the only one who is parenting in my classroom. I don't get paid. It's not in my job description that one of my roles is to parent these children. Now I will reinforce and I will talk to them if their behavior gets out of control. But I am not going to burn myself out because yo child X, Y and Z. I can't be the only person that they're hearing this from. I can't be. And it frustrates me to no end. Oh, you're dude. That is freaking spot on. with exactly what the issue is. We are as teachers. A lot of these cases are the only ones who are reinforcing the standards, these academics. It's not the parents. It's not family. It's not community. It's the teachers. And so when and even the kids aren't even, it's not like the kids. It's like, I love how they always try to sell the idea that a kid is struggling and they really want to do well in school. They don't. They have zero, lack of a better one. They've got zero fucks when it comes to school because they know that they don't have to. If they want to get that, if they want to get that diploma, right? This is for the high schoolers, of course. I've had a kid who acted, come on, man, you got to do this stuff. It's going to help you pass. It's going to help you get through this. Oh, no, I'm just going to take credit recovery. So he's going to tank my class average. He's going to tank my report scores, which only affect me, but it's gauged off of their performance. And he is perfectly fine with going to credit recovery on the back end and sit in my class and do nothing. Yeah, ah. it's it's... And it's hard across the board, but for me, thankfully, my eighth grade class, they get it. Seventh grade is starting to. Sixth grade, it hasn't registered in their brains yet. One of the other things I've been battling with this year is after the first trimester, my... and It's killing me with you calling it trimesters. It, I, I automatically think pregnancy, so it's... <laughs> Every time you say it, I'm like, after my first trimester, I'm like, you're going to download a child soon. I have... Mul I am watching multiple children at this point, so by osmosis, they have become my own children, which is ridiculous because I have to parent them as well. So I'm just like, yeah, fuck them kids. See, that's how I feel sometimes. But I'm sure I had a come to Jesus moment with these kids because after the first couple of star tests that we took to monitor progress, I, my principal sat us down specifically me and the language arts teacher because we teach the core subject or whatever the bottom line is if these tests if the test scores don't show improvement and or we don't see if my students don't show that they're doing what needs to be done next year i have to teach out of a stupid textbook which i don't want to do because I way that I'm teaching my curriculum is I have broken down the standards and divided it into like units that go along with the state standards. So they're broken down into six overarching units that go with the six categories of math standards here in California. And so like number sense, equations, geometry, data and information, all that stuff has been broken down into sections. And I'm trying to make this as easy as possible. I don't want to teach out of the textbook because the common core methods, they overcomplicate things for no fucking reason. But th that's another conversation we can have. But I had a come to Jesus moment because I had to talk to my students. I'm like, listen, obviously, I didn't say what I'm about to say. But for just to shorthand it, I said, don't fuck this up. I was like, you know how I keep this, telling you that, that internal <laughs> dialogue the teacher has. Oh, fucking me right now that's exactly how i expressed it i was like remember how i keep telling you even if it's not within the testing window because i test my students ever so often i'll give it to them like beginning and end of the month even if it's not required for our testing windows i said remember how i'm telling you to treat each one of these even if it's not during the tested period like it's the real thing i was like the reason why i keep telling you this is because if you guys don't take this seriously 
I'm going to have to teach out of a textbook next year, which means we can't do any of the fun shit that we're doing in class right now. And that means you're going to have more work than you're supposed to. If you don't want that to happen, I need you guys to take this seriously. And again, mm. my eighth grade immediately picked up on it. And of course, there are some students that still struggle, but they understand. And in all honesty, they don't even have to do this because technically by the end of this year, they're done. They're in high school. But they understand that they don't want eighth grade next year to have this. So they're going to do their best. Seventh grade has started to get it. I can't register it in sixth grade enough. And I'm just like, you guys, you are screwing me over here. There is. Oh, my God, Mike, I can't even tell you. There is such a big gap between all three of my middle school classes. Eighth grade is there. Seventh grade is a mixed bag, but most of them get it. The sixth graders have been driving my patience and making me question whether or not I'm teaching mathematics the correct way for them. It does. Things that have worked in the past, but all it should work in, with the future the, to, to some degree that we turn around and I, my first my my first year of giving the standardized test for uh, history, I had one kid get a perfect score. Last year, I had two kids get a perfect score. So something's working with my test or with my uh, thing. And I've got I have the most kids that pass this test. It's how I deliver the material. When you start doubting it, you're like, "There's no way I'm off the mark this bad." When you see such drastic changes. In performance. But yeah, and you're right. Yeah. It harkens back. So granted, this was like two months ago, but that whole text thread, I was just like, you guys, I am broken today. Like I have question like it's better now, but that was probably the lowest point that I have ever felt. Not just this academic school year, but in my six years of being a teacher, this was the lowest point I have ever felt in my life. And I was just like, I don't understand. And it got so bad that I ended up having a conversation with my mother, of all people, who understands because she's an educator herself and just like explaining it to her. And then halfway, just bursting into tears. So I'm like, I shouldn't feel this shitty, but I can't explain why I feel this shitty because I feel like I'm doing everything right, but the results aren't showing it and I don't know what to do. Hey, remember your why. I, <laughs> Fuck that. No, that's exactly how I feel. <laughs> it is. It's sad that it gets to that level of frustration, but remember your why. And I'm just like, oh, kid, you've got to be kidding me with this. Oh, yeah, my brain is, when it's, it makes it to where I was, I'm leaving closer and closer to my contract time every day. I'm like, you know what? Grades are still going to be there. The graded, the papers that need grading are still going to be there. You know what? I'm not going to kill myself for this. Not that I, not that I'm sitting there saying it's, I'm, it's killer to do it, but it's, Legitly to the point where you have to match that energy or you're going to burn yourself out. If you're carrying 200% that it takes between them and us, 200% that needs to be done for them to perform academically. If you're carrying the lion's share of that, I'm not talking like you know, they got 99, you're carrying a 101. No. When you're pulling like 180 plus percentage, what do we get? That's taking, it's taking away from every, every, any other kid that needs your help. But it's taking the time, the effort, the mental strain on you as the teacher. All of this is getting robbed as you fight with one kid to just do the bare minimum. Where do we say, you know what? Dude, I'm going to be here when you get, when you're done. When you're ready to be to start and carry your weight of this, I'll be there for you. But till that point, man, go off. Yeah, and carrying that weight is just it's ridiculous. I was like, you, this is a if we're all going to succeed in this classroom, it has to be give and take. I can't be giving all the time. And then you guys don't give me nothing in return. And my sixth graders this week found out the hard way. So the way I set up my classroom for all of them 
is that I have some sort of kind of economic system. So I use class of dojo and they have points that they can convert into different rewards that I have in class. Yes, I know I teach middle school, but honestly, this is what has helped me motivate certain students if they can get something out of it. And so far it's working, but no, that's great, dude. Don't ever. Yeah. Yeah, it's seventh and eighth grade have been doing really good. Six started off with it, but my sixth graders found out the hard way of nah. You know what? Y'all going to start pulling their weight because academically, I know they can do better, but we're halfway through the year. So they're all starting to get lazy. And then because of how small my school is, because it's private. And the extra thing. So this week we had all day like school event where the kids got to. We basically didn't teach that day. We we're having a good time. We we're enjoying it. Mike, I kid you not. I have never raised my voice as loud as I did this past week on two separate occasions on the same day. Because mm. one, they were slobs and they were pigs. They're like they can't pick up their own garbage and it's ridiculous. I was like, it's common sense that when you are done with your stuff, you throw it in the trash can. Why is it all over the table? And then they're just like pouring. It's like kindergarten behavior, but even the kindergartners at my school don't even act like that. Pouring soda on each other's food, like throwing s- strawberries at each other. Like just, it was a complete, it just looked like a bomb of trash went off, Mike. It was ridiculous. And they all just left it there. And so I made them all go back and clean up. And when we got back inside, I yelled at them so hard. <laughs> I was like, are you? Again, I, I was very academic about it, but in my, <laughs> this is the internal This is the internal translation. I'm like, what the fuck was that? I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Do you? I was like, do your parents raise you to be pigs? How the hell do you just finish your food and leave the trash there, not throw it in the garbage can? It's not that hard. And so I was just like, don't test my patience today, you guys, because I'm pissed off right now. Use my wife's Montessori teachings when it comes to it. I'm like, all right, whose mess is this? Could Mr. Ward have to clean up this mess? And it's usually the kid who made it. No. And they run back over and pick it up real quick. But they were happy just to leave it there. I'm like, y'all see my classroom, right? Y'all see the effort I put into here to decorate, to give y'all a warming environment that makes it conducive to learning. Do you guys not like this? I can turn my overhead lights on. We can go to bare bones walls. We can go straight school funded, if that's what you choose. But yeah, you're right. It's because nobody held them to standard on this and that was just the first half of the day that in the same day (laughs) in the same half of the day we go out because we have all school kind of assembly thing and they were misbehaving so bad that when we got back to the classroom we had 50 minutes left of the school day so i made them put all their stuff away and they just sat with their heads down the entire time shit i want to do that no, and I just let them have it as calmly as I could because that was the day I was like, this is probably the day I'm going to lose my job. <laughs> yeah. I was like, this is some bullshit. That's it's like, where's my breaking point today? And there's more and more to those days that pop up. That we sit there and really start to question ourselves. My wife's even said, she goes, you keep... This past week, you've come home more and more sounding like a disgruntled teacher. Hmm. I'm like, I really don't like to think I I am. It's just getting frustrated with the simplest things that is trying to get one kid to do work, trying to get two kids to get off their phone. And I call, I actually called one kid's mom at her job because she used to work at the school with us. And I called him and said, hey, do you want to talk to your son real quick? Because he's doing a little more phone and I need him to do a little more work because he wasn't listening to me and I'm not going to get in a sh- yet yelling match with you. <laughs> Sorry. I'm getting lunch. Sorry for interrupting. I'm getting lunch. They want McDonald's. Same. Do you want anything? Same, same. Double Text. cheese. Text me. Okay. If you're cool with it, maybe we can have your wife guest star and she can. <laughs> oh God. She'll give you a Montessori perspective. Yeah. She, this thing is I'll get a, another mic set up. 
and we could we'll do, uh, get a headset. Yeah, she might get a kick out of it initially, especially when she knows that it's only voice and not video. But yeah, that's been my last couple of weeks. And again, you work through it, you get over it. But I'm just like, I don't know, man. I was like, I remember when I didn't wasn't complaining this much, but I, every school year is different. And this year has been weird, to say the least. Yeah, and I, and I don't ever want to get to that point. I enjoy teaching. I enjoy time with the students. And even the kids that, you know, that I, that you just sit there, dude, they just test you every day. There's some that I don't much care. I'm like, ah, oh, this kid. But again, I'm always trying to be better for them because I know what they can be. There's some of those kids that they don't care. I have one kid, he's, yeah, I, I think about dropping out and I'm going to be, become a copywriter. Do you know what that engage? you know what it ta- takes to do that, man? Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to be an entrepreneur. I love that one. I'm going to be an entrepreneur when I get out or get out of, get out of school. He's, oh yeah, no, I'll just hire people to do all this stuff, all the math, all the, uh, the budget. I was like, no, dude, do you know what happens when an entrepreneur is not aware of their inner workings? You get somebody to come and take over your business, kick you out of it. I won't let them do that. I said, dude, you won't know any better because you don't have that education. I said, there's a reason why there are so there's degree programs, business management, organizational management. There's so many business. There's a master's in business. Dude, there's a reason for that. That's why they have lawyers that fight these battles. Come on. But again, you're to also half these kids, they hear these buzzwords. They don't know what it means. All they know is they want to do work, and they're going to continue to do that. Remember when we started this podcast and we were just having a good time about our <laughs> professions? Yeah. I love that. And I love to sit there and just complain. And I say complain. I just do great. It's that venting process of it, and which I think is great. I really look forward to sitting and just... Huh, because I'll get done with this and I'll decompress and I'll be ready for Monday morning. No issue whatsoever. But it's, you need that vent to just, you just shut the door and just scream. Take that deep breath and walk back into the classroom. <laughs> oh really? my goodness. It, tell me, does it, tell me there's times that you just want to be like, one second, like just have some way to freeze your classroom, shut the door, or walk out, shut the door. Just, ah, uh, just scream, let that blood chilly, just, ah, uh, back in. All right, class, let's go ahead and get our books open. Because it it's just <laughs> that, that kind of just, are you freaking kidding me? My, uh, my work wife, she's the librarian, and she's, you don't come down there anymore to have lunch. I was like, well, I got my student teacher and we sit up there. But because she has so many of her, she's the uh, team mom for the girls' basketball team. So her office, where we would eat in the back part of her office in the library, is full of kids. They're always coming in, out, asking for stuff and doing stuff and chiming. I was like, you know what? I need my lunch break to be away from them. To sit back and just take care of what I need to take care of. I, I can't have that time with them. Or, sorry, I can't have that time with them there. I need that time to be a break from these kids. It's so weird. Because the first couple of years, I didn't have a problem with it. I didn't have a problem with the kids eating in my classroom. You want to grab your lunch and come up? I want you to give you guys a space. And not everybody falls into that niche group or those little cliques in the cafeteria. And I understand that. Sometimes you just want a place to be away. And I accepted everybody who can come in. I don't care where you fell on the school popularity spectrum, where you fell on the social spectrum. I don't give two craps. My classroom was a place for all. I had kids playing dd and I had kids doing video games. I had kids reading, talking, making TikToks. I'm like, go nuts. And the more, the as the years progress, I'm like, I need time away from y'all. I've got to set that boundary to go... No, because my mental health is important. And I know it's it sounds selfish, and at least to me, it sounds selfish when teachers say that. And I know it's not. It sounds like I am not going to kill myself for these kids. What do we expect from teachers? We expect teachers to literally bend over backwards to give every incident. My daughter had a perfect example of it. 
There's a student that showed up late. The principal brought the kid in. The kid's been an issue with before. But the kid shows up late because mom brings him late. He's a kindergartner. He's hungry. The principal goes, oh, he didn't get breakfast. He's hungry. Do you have anything for him? It was my daughter's responsibility as a teacher to feed the kid, have snacks, to make sure. It's not the schools providing or the cafeteria providing the, the chow, the food. It was up to the teacher, and it just showed a great example that teachers expect to be the answer for everything. Depending on what hat that kid needs you to wear, the teacher's going to put it on. That if that, te that kid has a need, that teacher's going to provide it be it school supplies, be it a charger for their phone, be it food, be it a pencil, whatever. The teachers are all expected to make sure that child has everything they need. Is there a way that you can keep that in your class? No. Mr. Ward, why don't you have snacks? Because my job is not to be a freaking roach coach over here. My job is to provide a lesson for you to teach you guys history. Then again, I also had one kid that she started crying when we were talking about the Holocaust because we just finished World War II. She started crying about the Holocaust and she's like, why didn't anybody do anything about this? I was like, I tried to say it. A lot of people were not aware to the extent that they were, that he was pushing the, this concept. And she turned around and got a book. And when I say this is a thick book, it was a thick Thick book. I don't know if you a book has three C's in it, but this is how thick that book was. And she legitly, it took her about a week to read it. She was like, oh my God, I couldn't put it down. She, my boyfriend goes, are you reading again? She goes, yeah, I'm reading again. She tore into this book because she cared about it that much. And she came back and she wanted to talk about it. And I'm like, fuck, that's why. That is why I give a damn. Because I will reach that one kid that will care a little bit more because of the lesson I gave. No matter how pissed off I got, that was why. I agree. And honestly, I think, and I guess the best way to put it is, for what everything that I've been dealing with for this past month or so, and everything that I've shared with the three of you, it's tough and unless people are in the educational sphere they have no idea how much work goes into the profession we do but i'm so happy that i have a support system and i feel like that should just i don't know how we get it started but i feel like that should just be a mandated thing across the profession be like hey we need to have a network of teachers we'll be like yo listen like you dealing with this problem? Talk to this person. If you want to vent about something, you got people teaching in the same grade or same content area. It's weird that it hasn't been a thing just even on a site like the site things. It's just like, hey, do you need to vent? Listen, I know everyone has different reasons when they become a teacher. And some people like like for me personally, I have the language arts teacher I go to because we cool like that. I guess I would consider them my work wife because I go to them. But most of the time I just stay to myself and it's not just and it's not because I don't like people. I don't like people, but I'm very more in, I'm very introverted. So I keep to myself, but I do have someone I can go to for advice or to vent or my frustration. And I've gotten out of my shell a bit more because then I've learned from them and be like, oh, you know what? Let me see if this works. Or maybe am I going crazy here? Is it just me? I was like, how are they doing in your class? Because sometimes I feel that I was like, I'm because I'm the only math teacher on the campus. I'm so involved in my math little world. I was just like, they're not getting this. Are they succeeding in other classes? Let me go ask the teachers real quick, because that way. I either can figure out what I need to do better or maybe I'm just overanalyzing and going to the language arts teacher is like, no, you're sixth grade. The sixth graders aren't that great with me either. So it's not just you. Don't worry about it. I'm like, thank you for the validation. I was losing my mind. We need those check ins. We really do to go. If I, have I just am I just done? Am I screwing up? And they're like, no, we're all sharing that same type of feeling right now. It's okay, cool. We want we want to just make sure we're not that outlier too. And we're like, yeah, we all fucked up right now. 
It's like, oh, cool, thanks. We're all in the same boat drowning together. Woohoo! Yeah. It is nice to get that double check in. I swear, it's like we need somebody to run a Discord server. It has a open 24-7 Discord chat room. So you can either jump in by voice or by video and just jump in and go, dude. I need to vent to teachers. You have to show your teaching certificate to get in. And you're like, if you have admin on it, you're like, no, nah, get the fuck out. <laughs> but just, it's like, all right, no. You have one for each grade level and you have to, you have to get it. You have a moderator. And that way when, you know, admin or district personnel tries to sneak in, you're like, no, I don't think so. Get it, we you should, be, yeah. The four of us should write teaching. a book. <laughs> yes. Get a teaching certificate. You have to show a picture of your active classroom. Out of this, I was a teacher 16 years ago. I've been admin ever since. I know what's going on. Fuck you. No, you don't. All right. <laughs> so tired of that caveat that anybody who comes in to do a PD or anything like that is, I used to be a teacher too, so I know your struggles. When's the last time you were in a classroom? Seven years ago? No. Uh-uh. Got to recertify. Get out. Go back into the classroom every three, four years. Yeah, I think three is like the max you should ever be out of the classroom if you're going to ever pull that. You know, that box like, I used to be a teacher. Yeah, but you don't know what's going on with this group. I, I think anything outside of four years, because you're roughly moving between elementary, middle, and high school every roughly four years. You need to have that recertification. Like, you can be in the district for that, but you need to go do some time in a classroom. I don't care if it's a student teacher gig or if you co-parent or co-teach a classroom, you need to get back in the classroom if you're going to sit there and try to, I know what's going on. No, you don't. It's the problems you dealt with in the 80s when you were a teacher is nothing like we are dealing with now. Uh, I know, man, but that's why I'm so happy, you know, that I have this podcast because I get to talk with the homies who are teachers who understand my frustrations, who are in the trenches with me. And sometimes it's tough, man, trying to explain this to other people who aren't in the teaching profession about, listen, I was like, I understand. I appreciate you're trying to empathize, but it's like, you don't know, man. You don't know. Yeah. It's, I, oh, you know what's real tough in my job, too? Yes, I understand. You've got your problems had a bad customer I have them all and I cannot walk away from them I'm locked in with them I have people pulling all directions there's so much that I think teachers are undervalued and I think people like try they really try to sit there and go when they say man teachers you guys are blessings I could never do what you do honestly believe that they could never do what we do y'all have to cut that break a little bit it is let the teachers go back to teaching. In one day, I got five IEP 504 update requests on, for information. It was just like, oh, they all hit. And yes, I could have spaced them out. I could have sat there and one this day, one this day. But between that, modifying assignments, assessments, between ELLs, ESEs, kids that are still un- I don't have to say undocumented because that sounds like there is an immigration status, but kids that are AD that don't have a 504 or an IEP, that they their parents won't go push to get them. You still have to, you're still trying to caveat for them. You're still like that they're a little bit of extended time. All right, so I'm going to give you extended time. Uh, you know what? I can see shit just trying to read freaking handwriting. These kids, I'm like, oh my God, will these English teachers... ELA teachers go back to teaching basic handwriting about grounding because I swear they're channeling Michael J. Fox when they go to write because I, I'm looking and I'm squinting and I'm like, dude, I don't know, I don't know, Mike, you ever seen shorthand where it's like legit yep. shorthand? This is what the handwriting looks like. And I'm like, dude, you can't write in shorthand. He's like, what's that? And I'm like, this. That's you guys need, if you need to go back third grade style, freaking uh, print it. You don't try to write cursive. You were never taught cursive. Nobody taught you. You don't just automatically like, I'm going to write in cursive. No, you have to be taught how to write in cursive. And just because you don't do your E's really well, doesn't mean you get to make a brand new character up for them. When I am looking I, at assignments, I shouldn't need to take the Rosetta Stone to decipher your hieroglyphics. <laughs> had one girl she tried to do an e 
And she's, I really don't like the ease. And so instead of being like out, up and around and down and then up to connect to the next letter, she just wrote it for the bottom of the previous letter and made a loop and ha angled it to the top, the top or upper corner of the next letter. So it looked more like squished I than anything else. And that was for the E's. You don't, that's not how this works. Can't read words. <laughs> but yeah, it's, I'm like, go back to writing, please. But yeah, I think we're, I, oh my gosh. But yeah, I think, honestly, I think this is a good point. To, we're going to save that. I want to have this conversation, but I want our other two beardos to be a part oh, of this because no. I want no, their that's, <laughs> that's one and a half beards. That's one and a half beards. That is true. Never let Brett forget. <laughs> Baby face Brett. Screw that. <laughs> but oh my goodness, Mike. It's, it was like the good old days when it's just me and you. Thank you so much for... <laughs> And for the listening audience, thank you so much for tuning into another episode of Unprofessional Development, a teacher edutainment podcast where you get to hear us bitch and moan and just and just talk about our profession in general. Support your teachers, please support your teachers. Our statements are not direct responsibility of the districts that employ us. Please do not hold us li do not hold them liable for our, our comments. We like maybe just a them. tiny bit, but okay, maybe just a hair bit. This has been a Vibe Tribe production. Remember, take care of each other, love one another, and as always, keep those good times rolling. We'll see you next time.